From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Wednesday the 25th of January 2023. Good afternoon. In today's Spotlight story, we run through the story surrounding Pence's classified documents. This isn't the only thing happening in the world though, so we'll run through three of today's other important stories. And in our exclusive Nebula section, we look at how gay marriage could be legalised in India. But first, why are Pence's classified documents causing controversy? In recent weeks, there's been what seems like regular news reports about more and more classified documents being found at the private home or office of US President Joe Biden. On Tuesday, news broke yet again of more documents being discovered, but not at Joe Biden's house, nor even at Donald Trump's. This time, classified documents were discovered at the home of former Vice President Mike Pence in Indiana. According to Greg Jacob, Pence's designated representative to the National Archives, a small number of documents bearing classification markings were, quote, inadvertently boxed and transported to Pence's home at the end of Trump's presidency. Jacob says Pence was unaware of the document's presence at his home. The documents were found last week after Pence asked outside counsel to review records stored in his personal home, out of an abundance of caution. According to Pence's lawyers, upon discovery the National Archives were alerted, with the FBI coming to Pence's home and requesting direct possession of the documents. The news about Mike Pence comes as two separate special counsels investigate the handling of classified documents by both President Biden and former President Trump. At the time of writing, it's unclear whether the Department of Justice will end up having to appoint its third special counsel in so many months. It's awkward for Pence for a couple of reasons. First, he repeatedly said he did not have any classified documents in his possession. And second, with rumours that he's considering a Republican presidential run in 2024, it makes it harder for him to contrast himself with Donald Trump, his former boss. Now, it's important to note that in the case of both Biden and Pence, their handling of the situation has been markedly different to Trump, who faces allegations of obstruction and resisted calls to return his stash of classified documents. But while it's bad news for Pence, it's pretty good news for Biden and Trump. For Biden, it takes the heat off him and his documents for the moment. Plus, as one official told CNN, it can prove to be a helpful example of another former vice president dealing with issues arising from a transition out of office. For Trump, it could add to the idea that the retention of classified documents is not a big deal and is a somewhat common occurrence. Sources close to Donald Trump also reportedly believe that it also makes it harder for the Department of Justice to eventually bring charges against Trump or his team for the document saga. Okay, so that's the biggest story of the day, but there's a lot more going on around the world. So here's a rundown of three other stories. It was announced yesterday that the world-famous Doomsday Clock has been moved 10 seconds closer to midnight. The clock is a metaphor for global collapse. The closer to midnight it is, the closer to global catastrophe humanity is. Since 2020, the clock has been set to 100 seconds to midnight. Now it's 90 seconds, the closest to midnight that it's ever been. The organisation explained that Russia's thinly veiled threats to use nuclear weapons remind the world that escalation of the conflict by accident, intent or miscalculation is a terrible risk, and that this is part of the reasoning for moving it closer to midnight. In addition to this, China's escalation of its nuclear capabilities is explained as particularly troubling, as is Iran's increased capacity for enriched uranium, India's nuclear arsenal development, and North Korea's missile testing. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine, or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. North Korea appears to be locked down today as a result of a respiratory illness. The North Korean government hasn't specified what this is. All we know is that they've ordered a five-day lockdown in the capital, Pyongyang, and that the notice which orders this does not mention COVID-19. 
As part of this, residents are required to submit multiple temperature checks each day. As yet, it's unknown whether similar measures are being brought in in different parts of the country. NK News, which monitors North Korea, reported on Tuesday that residents were stocking up on goods in anticipation of stricter measures. Lebanon's former Prime Minister, top prosecutor and other senior current and former officials have been charged in connection with the devastating Beirut port explosion of 2020, Reuters has reported. The judge investigating the blast that killed at least 218 people resumed his investigation this week after more than a year of paralysis caused by political resistance and legal difficulty. Among those reportedly charged are then Prime Minister Hassan Diab, his former Interior Minister and former Public Works Minister. They've been charged with homicide and probable intent according to court summons seen by Reuters. Another official that has been charged is the country's Prosecutor General. However, he's written a letter to the investigating judge saying that the judge's probe remained suspended and no decision had been made to resume it. The explosion on the 4th of August 2020 that tore through Beirut was caused by hundreds of tonnes of ammonium nitrate stored in poor conditions at the capital's port. Families of victims are still waiting for anyone to be held accountable. In the final uplifting story today, we discuss penguins. Satellite images have been used to look at one of the most remote and inaccessible regions of Antarctica. In looking at this, a new colony of penguins has been found, which is home to about 500 birds. This brings the number of known emperor colonies in Antarctica up to 66. This was an important discovery, because emperor penguins are the only kind of penguin that breed on sea ice rather than land, meaning that their colonies are often inaccessible and temperatures can reach as low as 60 degrees. That's all we have time for on YouTube today, but if you want to see our discussion of whether gay marriage could soon be legal in India, then watch the extended and free edition of The Daily Briefing over on Nebula. Now might be the time to do it, as there's an offer which gets you a year of membership for less than $1 a month. That's huge because Nebula subscribers not only get everything you've already watched ad-free, but also an extended edition of the show every single day, available to watch on Nebula or stream on your podcast app of choice. They also get access to a ton of other exclusive ad-free TLDR content, as well as videos from all your favourite creators. The good news is, like I mentioned, our friends at CuriosityStream, the streaming service which offers you some of the world's best documentaries, is offering an incredible deal whereby you can get both platforms, CuriosityStream and Nebula, for less than $12 a year. That's all the documentaries you could want on CuriosityStream, and then more TLDR content on Nebula, including the extended briefing, other full exclusive TLDR videos, and it's always ad-free. Click the link below to get both services for less than a dollar a month, a deal which doesn't last long, and support the channel.